Hey everybody, it's Jess with Razorback Armory, and today on our Bullet Points podcast, we're going to do some frequently asked questions on the AR, as this month is the AR month, or for August, of course. To me, all months are AR months. Um, so we're going to go over the AR-15, we're going to go over frequently asked questions about the AR, and some just basic knowledge for everyone to have out there um, to make you a more informed AR owner, or if you're thinking about purchasing an AR, at least you know a little bit more about it before you get into one. So... Let's get started. This is an AR-15. It is empty. So we're gonna go through, pull the mag, check for open chamber. All right, so your AR-15, a few basic components. We're gonna break these down into the upper, the lower, and then finally when we get into it, we're gonna talk about some optics. So to separate your upper from your lower, there is a rear pin, and then there will be a front pin. These pins on my AR are moving out very easily. Sometimes you may need to tap them with a punch and a drift um, just to knock them out. Good tight pins are good, but if you've got a pin that doesn't move, it's not doing you any favors in case you need to uh, check for an obstruction or field strip out on the range. So you do want these to move fairly freely, but we'll go from there. All right, so this is your lower. So this is the lower receiver. This is the registered part of the AR. So this is gonna hold your fire control all of your lower parts kit, your stock and your stock tube, and buffer. Also your grip. This is kind of the starting point of your AR for ergonomics, for kind of the base or the foundation of your build or your rifle if you're buying it whole. So your grip frame. What this is gonna do here is you're gonna get your in feed. So what type of ammunition is going into the actual weapon itself? You've got your fire control, your safety, mag release, bolt drop, your buffer tube, buffer tube and spring. Okay, so that holds all of that. If you're doing these as a build from the ground up, you're actually going to buy just the receiver itself. You're then going to get a lower parts kit. Inside the lower parts kit, you're going to have your springs, detents, your takedown pins, your bolt catch release, the actual drift roll pin that goes through that and or if you have a new one like an M4E1 or like on this one right here, they're actually threaded so you can do it with an Allen. Um, to your safety, detents and springs. So all these small parts actually go together to form your lower receiver. Now, if you watched YouTube or any other videos, I think we've got a couple of them out there about building your AR lower. The only thing I can tell you about that is take your time go slow and be very deliberate about it okay understand that you know when you're putting springs under tension you're pushing parts or pieces across the top of them you need to make sure that it's done uh, efficiently and very deliberately if not those springs and pieces are going to fly across the room you're going to find them and try again or you're going to come in and ask me if you can buy just that spring again which we do so um, so with that that is your lower your upper all right so the upper has a lot to do with designating caliber because the lower itself doesn't designate the caliber per se. Your upper will because of the, your barrel, your bolt and carrier. So you take this down, you pull the charging handle to the rear, take out your bolt and carrier. Now you're left with just the upper itself. So you have your upper receiver. We have the barrel. This would be the handguard. Underneath the handguard is the actual are the nut, your barrel nut, which is holding the handguard and keeping the barrel in place. You got your muzzle device. Under here we have a gas block. And with the gas block, then we have your gas tube. So with that, you have your upper. Now, when these two pieces are mated together, you have your full AR. So with the upper itself, so different components, different pieces. A lot of people are looking at building their own AR. So things that you need to know when building your own AR. So you've got your barrel length, okay? So this is a 16 inch barrel. We have a 15 inch handguard on it. Your barrel is gonna have your gas block orientation. It's gonna be set, generally speaking, in one of three places. You have carbine, mid length, and rifle length. What that does is as the, on your barrel, as the bullet is leaving, as soon as that bullet gets past the gas block, those gases will go up the gas block, back down the gas tube, push on the carrier, releasing that, unlocking the cam, sliding it rearward against your buffer and spring, 
so that we can remove the, remove the empty casing, throw it out, grab a new casing as we're coming back, push it back in, and then start the whole process over again for the weapons operation. That is done in those three different gas block lengths. So carbine is gonna happen the fastest. And generally speaking, it's um, not as smooth, but it can be used on a shorter barrel. Mid-length is kind of the new industry standard on where everyone's going as it's a little bit milder recoil, um, it's a little bit nicer fit. And then the old style is rifle length. That's out the full 12 inch where it is your longer gas tube. Generally, it was only for 20 inch barrels, but now you can get a 16 inch barrel with that they call them the old style dissipators. So that would be on your upper. That is really your only variable. Obviously your barrel, which caliber you're gonna use, your gas orientation, so where that's gonna be carbine, mid-length or rifle length, and then your lower receiver. So some lower receivers have a forward assist, some don't. To me, that's a personal preference. Some people like to see it on there, although most people do not use that anymore. Some will or will not have a port door cover. Uh, I do like this feature as it allows you to button it up, keeps anything foreign from getting in there and messing up with the operation of the gun. Generally speaking, like when it's coming in and out of your bag, when it's operating, that thing's open and stuff's just getting blown straight out the port. So you have your lower, you have your upper. As I mentioned earlier, so when the gun fires and your bolt is here, the bolt's pushing against the buffer in the spring, which is housed in this rear tube. So as that bolt's pushing back, this is your buffer and spring. Some people like to kind of dive into tuning their gun by changing the buffer weight. This is not a bad idea, but you do have to understand what you're doing. A standard weight, and then you've got H1s, H2s, and H3s. These will get heavier, so what that'll do is it'll slow the bolt down. By slowing down the bolt, you have a little more control over how fast it's going, obviously, where your brass is going, and keeping the gun in tune so that it's not running too fast. But also, if you just automatically, people think, oh, an H, if an H1 is good, an H3 is better. If you can actually slow the bolt down too much, then you're gonna cause problems because you're gonna get uh, failure to feed, the gun's not gonna run properly. So make sure when you're looking at that, you're balancing out all of your parts together. So this is your lower, your stock. Now stock tubes, there are mil spec and there are commercial. 90% of the world got smart and they all went mil spec. There are still some commercial tubes. So you do need to know what you have if you're going to change out your stock. The nice part about an AR stock for a collapsible is I can shorten it up and if you want to be more tactical, if you have armor on, it'll uh, still fit you. Also, if you have some youth shooters, they could shoot this gun because of their length of pull, and you could take it and set it up for you for your length of pull with the same weapon. So as you're training them on it, you're both using the same thing. You're actually going over the ergonomics and the safety on the same weapon. That's a beautiful part of the AR, kind of is how modular that it is. So this is your kind of basic breakdown of your AR, your upper, your lower, charging handle, bolt and carrier. So this would also be considered what is your basic field stripping. From this, you would go ahead and clean. If you've got your boar snake or your boar boss rope, pull down the barrel. You've got access to your fire control, so you can get in there, clean everything out, clean the mag well. More importantly to clean your bolt and carrier. A lot of people come in, they're saying, ah, oh, my gun was running great, it started to malfunction. We take it apart. This thing is bone dry. It's got carbon caked all over it. Um, these guns do not need to be run wet. I mean, just soaking wet with oil. It's just going to get blown off. But they do need a light film of oil. Even if you're running a nickel boron Bolton carrier, it likes a light film of oil. So by doing that, keep everything filmed, keep the actual bearing surfaces or where the, everything is going to wear and slide. Keep those with a nice light film of oil. Your gun will like it and it will run a lot better and a lot more efficiently for you. Also on your charging handle, keep, keep it clean, keep a light film of oil on it. As it goes down that upper channel right there, it'll move smoother and cleaner and easier with a light film of oil. Now this is all great, but there is no optic. So with optics on guns, it is more to personal preference. It is more towards, you know, uh, we ask this question a lot is how do you see yourself shooting the gun? If you are kind of going out with your buddies, you know, muzzle to 50, muzzle to 75 yards, kind of putting out some random targets or steel, and you're just out there to blast and have a good time. Iron sights would work for you. You could, honestly, you could use a red dot, something like this SIG Romeo 5. Um, if you're looking for, though, a little more precision, a little more accuracy, trying to be a little more precise, but you also want the 
availability of something like a red dot. There's a new, uh, really nice product from SIG, the Tango MSR. These come in one to six, one to eight, and one to 10. So you have that variable power, so you can drag it down to one, and it works pretty much like a red dot. Uh, you can use it both eyes open, good target acquisition. But if you've got a target that's a little further away or you want a little better precision, you can then go up in power, so to either six, eight, or 10 power, or any place, any variable that you'd like in between that, to bring that in, get that magnification to take a better, cleaner, and more accurate shot. And then obviously we have um, your traditional scope options. So if you were wanting to do more uh, longer range, something more of like uh, varmint hunting, um, a lot of guys will still deer hunt, you know, small game with their ARs. They'll use a traditional scope. My traditional, you know, you have your 3940. This happens to be uh, 6, 6, 18, 44. Um, so you've got, I've got up to 18 power on this, which is my long range setup. It is suppressed. A lot of different uh, ergonomics setup for that with the bench, but this is more for long range. So a lot heavier gun, not something I necessarily want to walk around and do some fun shooting with but it definitely fits the bill of longer range more accurate more precise delivery and then i've got something like this which is more of a tactical entry so this one right here little sbr suppressed this one right here is a lot shorter a lot more compact tacks in gets really close to the body helps maneuverability so if i'm going in and out of doorways in and out of vehicles around cover over or under something this one lends itself to be right up tight to my body, maneuverable. The neat part about all three of these ARs is technically the, they all have the same lower receiver with a different manufacturer, the upper. The barrel length, your hand guards, and some other pieces are unique to each build, but each build is unique to how it's deployed. So if you want something that's a little more middle of the road, you can kind of do everything with, start out with your standard AR and then building it out for you, great idea. If you want something a little more specific, where if you're going for an SBR, you're going for something tight, close, really maneuverable, awesome. If you're going for something that is gonna be a lot more long range, a lot more hunting oriented, a lot uh, more precision oriented, no problem. You can absolutely set up something like this. But all of them are ARs, okay? They're two piece modular system, upper and lower, built out how you want your gun to work, how you wanna see yourself shooting your gun, and what you want to see yourself doing on the range having fun with your weapon so if you're into this if it's something that you might want to do absolutely stop by Razorback stop by your local gun shop start asking some questions and getting some information about the AR that's going to work for you something that you're going to enjoy be able to take out and shoot uh, go out with your buddies go out with your family go out with your kids get into you know hunting get into target shooting uh, using it as a defensive weapon these are excellent defensive weapons training with all of that so that you are well versed on your AR you know how to take it apart you know how to clean it you know that if you're looking at certain parts you know will this part fit on my AR will it not fit on my AR is it something that I'm putting on my AR which is enhancing it not just by putting a light or a laser on and thinking it's cool but actually with the ergonomics is it gonna make the weapon fit you better and help you when you're out there shooting to make it more seamless, make it more effortless for you to shoot the gun and make it more enjoyable for your shooting. So hopefully you guys like this uh, quick hit into ARs, kind of our frequently asked questions, kind of a little real quick in and out, give you the basics on it. Uh, anything that you have questions on, definitely feel free to stop by the shop or drop us a line. We can try to help you with that. Again, if you're building your AR, we can go over the parts with you. We can go over what's necessary for you to build out your AR. Uh, I know some shops are kind of like, hey, you know, if you don't have a degree in ARs, you shouldn't be building them. But we're here to support you in the industry too. If you want to try this, absolutely give it a try. If you want to understand your AR a little better, hey, come in, talk to us. We're going to help you understand the parts, understand where they go. And if you have a hiccup along the way, let us help you out with that. But if you're wanting to just pick out all your pieces and say, I don't want to build it, hey, that's something that we can do, or most likely your local shop can do for you. Um, that way it's still building a unique gun for you, although you didn't build it, it's still something that you picked out. You had a lot of say in, I like this stock, I like this grip, I don't want the standard fire control, I want an upgraded fire control, you know, I want that lighter trigger pull, I want that shorter reset. 
I do like this handguard. I want something that's fully free floated so I can put a light on it, a laser. I can put on a bipod, you know, I can set the gun up how I want to see it so that it goes out and it works for me. So again, hi, I'm Jess, Razorback Armory. This is in our Bullet Points podcast on our August AR month, which every month is AR month. Um, kind of going over these things and helping you out. Appreciate you watching.